Hello students and welcome to the Baiju's Math Challenge number 7. Now the problem that you are checking out here came in an entrance exam of a very prominent B school. Okay, B school I mean a business school. And the level of difficulty, okay, is, is going to be slightly on the moderate to difficult side. But the concepts that would be used to get through to the answer to this are going to be fairly simple as usual. Alright, so what do we have here? We have been given a fraction in terms of some variables. So A plus B plus C plus D divided by A plus B, if you notice, there is C minus D. And there are, uh, uh, there is a condition that needs to be followed and that is A, B, C and D are different positive integers selected from 1 to 25 okay so all of these a b c and d have got to be different and you can only choose it from numbers 1 to 25 including both 1 and 25 of course okay so let's go ahead check out as I said the concepts are simple we'll be using the idea of hit and trial to measure how the fraction is moving and all we need to know is is what happens when I increase the denominator or what happens when I decrease the denominator keeping the numerator the same or increasing decreasing fairly simple ideas of fractions all right so come on let's let's check out how the solution is going to be planned now first thing let's try to make this denominator as small as possible all right uh, because uh, let's have a look at this let's suppose you have 10 divided by 2 how much is the answer going to be it's going to be 5 right now what will happen if I divide 10 by 4 the answer will get smaller right this is going to be how much this will be 2.5 10 divided by 1 is going to be how much? It is going to be 10. Yeah. So the smaller the denominator, assuming the numerator is the same, uh, Bob, you know, the bigger the answer is going to be. So that's the idea here. We are going to try and make this denominator a plus b plus c minus d as small as possible. Okay. Now, as I said, uh, these are the only considerations possible for us. 1 to 25. Now, let's do a little bit of plug and play and, and see how uh, the answer takes shape. Now, first thing that I would do here is that... Uh, I would take A and B to be very small because A plus B is there in the numerator. It is also there in the denominator as well. So let's just go ahead and say that my A value is 1 and my B value is 2. All right. And now since in the numerator I have C plus D and in the denominator I have C minus D, I can take uh, C and D to be as big as possible, right? Because the idea is to make the numerator as big as possible and the denominator as small as possible. So can I go ahead and consider C as 24 and D as 25? Yeah. And let's see uh, what answer do we get when we choose these numbers. So uh, calculating the uh, numerator now, this becomes 1 plus 2 plus 24 plus 25 divided by 1 plus 2 plus 24 minus 25, right? Now, I observe this. What, what is happening? 1 plus 2 is 3. This becomes 49. 49 plus 3, this is going to be 52. Divided by 24 minus 25 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 will get cancelled out. But hey, the denominator is still 2, right? So this is becoming uh, 26. Now, let's, let's uh, check this out. Can I make the denominator equal to 1? Right? Let's let's see because the denominator as per these values is coming around as 2 and I've got to check if, if it is possible to make the denominator equal to 1 because the denominator of course can't be equal to 0 right? because division by 0 is not allowed and the denominator can't be made negative right? because we're looking to make this answer as big as possible. So let's just see if it is possible to make the denominator equal to 1. Uh, what values uh, we shall be selecting for that? Well, A and B, of course, they've got to be as small as possible. Yeah, so A can only be 1 and B can be 2. But this time what I'm going to do here is, if I want to make the denominator equal to 1, the value of C minus D, I can go ahead and make that as minus 2, right? Uh, how am I going to do that? Well, C can be 23 and D can be 25 this time. 23 and then 25, right? Now let's see what happens if I plug these values in. So this is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 23 plus 25 divided by 1 plus 2 plus 23 minus 25. Now 23 minus 25 is minus 2. 2 minus 2 this time is getting cancelled out and I'm ending up with this is going to be 48, 50, 51 divided by 1 and there you go. It is quite bigger when you compare it with the last answer which was I believe 26. So this right here is going to be the biggest possible value 
for this fraction given to us that is a plus b plus c plus d divided by a plus b plus c minus d. So you see, fairly simple ideas, plug and play or hit and trial as it's often called. And, and what else did we require to solve this question? The idea that denominator has to be smaller, you know, numerator has to be bigger for the answer to be bigger. And then uh, we, we just plugged in some numbers and we observed the values and this is how we were able to solve this problem. Yeah, good enough. Now, if a plus b plus c is equal to 60, you have got to figure out the maximum possible value of a multiplied with b multiplied with c. And I'm going to make your job a little simpler by also telling you that a, b and c can only be positive integers. When I say positive integers, I mean what values? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, on and on and on. So these are the only values that A, B and C can take. Let me know the answer to this in the comments box. And lastly, if you liked this question, you know, make sure you hit that like button. Share it with your friends as well. I mean, come on, this was a fairly challenging uh, uh, business school entrance exam question. And lastly, if you still haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And that's all. Thank you for your time and bye-bye.